My name is Françoise Boucher-Saunier. Today it's uh, the opportunity to discuss about the, the publication of the Practical Guide to Humanitarian Law and the new, edition, the new Arabic edition and uh, an opportunity to go back uh, to the main misconception of people uh, regarding international humanitarian law, the IHL issue. So main misconception of IHL, I would say are today the fact that IHL would be irrelevant because it was designed for past uh, armed conflict between states uh, and today's conflict are more about state and non-state actors and the war against terrorists and IHL would not fit this new pattern and uh, this new war would be uh, fought without uh, without actually any legal background, any international protection for the people except counter-terrorism. So this misconception is very, very dangerous. It is opening the field for criminalization of assistance. And it is wrong fundamentally because in 1977, the Geneva Convention were updated with an additional protocol covering non-international harm conflict. So it's not new terrorist activities and method has been used in the past for armed conflict uh, raging inside a country and opposing the armed forces and non-state uh, armed groups and this uh, legal framework, international legal framework, is applicable and relevant to contemporary uh, armed conflict. So it's wrong to accept this idea and it leads to the criminalization of assistance, this is why it's important to uh, oppose strongly this uh, misconception of IHL. Maybe the second most frequent misconception of IHL is that it is actually too complex and it's made for military people. This is again fundamentally wrong. Uh, if you remember then uh, the number of victims of conflict are civilian, the vast majority of victims of conflict today are civilian. Uh, it is essential that there is a civilian expertise of the law of war to ensure that the protection of civilian is taken into account, not only at military headquarters, but also within the debate inside society and at international level in terms of the management of the conflict. This is also fundamentally wrong because the international humanitarian law has two pillars. The first one regulate the method of warfare, but the second, which is essential for civilian, organize the relief for the victim of conflict. So the right to assistance, the right to protection for the one that are not taking part in hostilities. This is integral part of the international humanitarian law. And so you cannot dissociate them. You have to combine them and it requires civilian expertise and understanding of the importance of this part of international humanitarian law to enable the society and the humanitarian organization to fulfill this essential mission which is allowing the survival of the victim of conflict during the period of conflict. I would say the last maybe misconception of IHL, the fact that it is actually powerless, you know, how can law help people in period of violence where law has disappeared because it is a time of harm forces, weapons, violence. Again, this is important to uh, oppose because the law of harm conflict is one of the most ancient international law, like maybe the law of rescue at sea. It's not, the objective is not to allow sanction afterwards and to allow judge to decide who was right, who was wrong. It is fundamentally based on the responsibility of the parties to the conflict to allow the survival of the non-combatant. And this does not uh, take place after the war. This law is useful during the war. So it does not uh, rely on judges, it relies on all parties 
meaning the civilian, the humanitarian organization, and the military parties to the conflict, to organize their common uh, um, life in the battlefield. You know, the, the, the possibility for humanitarian organization to go in area of conflict is provided by this law of war. And this is why um, also this law of war does not only rely on broad international convention, it relies on special agreement. Every time there is a war, the parties, both the military, but also the civilian, political and humanitarian, must sit together and design agreement to organize concrete relief operation. And this is essential at the time of conflict. So it's a very specific area of law that is not only dependent on judges and sanction, but on commitment for humanity of all parties involved in those situations. So the battlefield do not belong only to the military. It belongs to the victims and it belongs to the humanitarian organization. Organizing the common life of these people and the coexistence of the civilian, the combatant and the relief is the role of humanitarian law and it doesn't need judges, it just needs people committed and the, acknowledging the legitimacy of the other missions. Finally, I think it's essential for supporter, civilian supporters of humanitarian organization and humanitarian their organization to put all this into very simple terms because law is complex but the principles are simple and when you act in situation of conflict you need tools that are as simple as the standard operating procedures of the military. The military they use manuals, field manuals. The humanitarian they must have field manuals to be able to master their rights and duties and understand the rights and duty of the others, including the military. And these tools, this uh, field manual that are for civilians and for uh, the humanitarian is exactly the purpose of the practical guide to humanitarian law. So please, if anything else you want to know about how essential these tools are for civilians, refer to the uh, new Arabic edition and also to the website.